Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Hafiz Ashraf bin Muhammad Sariti And my partner is Muhammad bin Abdullah So now uh, we will be presenting on discussion on the constitutional history And development of sovereignty, prerogative and legal immunity of the Manus ruler Since Malaya started falling to the Japanese in early 1942 The British have been discovering and gathering plans to establish the Malayan Union as a new form of government of Malaya. Following the end of the Japanese occupation, the state of food and relationship among Malayan became irregular, and the British proposed the Malayan Union as a solution to the problem at the time. According to, according to the British, the Malayan Union administration was established to better organize the Malay states. As a result, the English colonized in London quietly decided, without consulting the Malay rulers or the Malays, to establish a colonial rule through the Malayan Union to replace the rule established by the British Army. However, the Malay people revolt against the Malayan Union because its administration system ignored the Malay people and the Malay rulers. This even resulted in the birth of a consciousness among Malays to fight for Malaya's independence. Next, we move to the first Malay Congress in 1946. The Malay's united spirit was reflected in the process against the Malayan Union. Due to that reason, on 11 March 1946, the first Malay Congress was held. It was arguably the official beginning of the Malay's principle of unity in opposition to the British. The first Malay Congress is a meeting place that has gathered almost 41 Malay's organizations it is the foundation of the entire Tanah Melayu Malay Congress. The Congress was able to unite all Malays into a powerful expression, resulting in the dissolution of the Malayan Union. At the time, Congress did not have any specific plan for the state administration and the economy. It is rather meant to protect and safeguard the Malay rulers' sovereignty as well as the Malays' right as the sons of soil. We moved to the AMNO establishment in 1946. As a result of the first Malay Congress that gathered almost 41 Malay organizations, the United Malays National Organization, or known as AMNO, was successfully established on 11 May 1946 with the support of the Sultan Johor at the time. With the establishment of the United uh, Malays National Organization, Many people played important roles and made significant contribution to the formation of the Federal Federation of Malaya in 1948. The British colonials Sir Edward Jane and Malcolm MacDonald had informed the Conference of Rulers that the British government had agreed to take the proposal for a new Malayan constitution under consideration made by the kings and AMNO. Dato On Ja'far and 11 other committee members were involved in writing a new constitution to replace the Malayan Union constitution on July 11, 1946. Next, we move to the first election. The election is significant because it introduced the country's parliamentary system, which is a key feature of our current constitution. As a result of the late 1940 and 1950 insistence of various parties, including political groups, the British agreed to hold municipal council election in 1951 and Kuala Lumpur in 1952. So these municipal elections were explained to Malayan people so that they could feel empowered to choose their leaders. The, the British then agreed to hold the local government elections after being persuaded by the Malay leaders. Tunku Abdul Rahman then negotiated a general election which was, which was finally held in 1955. The, the election's significance was that the members of the Federal Legislative Council were successfully elected. Next, we move to the independence talks in London. The London Constitutional Conference, or known as the Independence Talk, were held from 18 January to 6 February 1956. The representatives from the Federation of Malaya consisting of four representatives of the Malay rulers, the chief minister of the federation, including Tunku Abdul Rahman and three other ministers, as well as the British High Commissioner in Malaya, attended the conference. The purpose of the conference is to devise a constitution of, for a fully self-governing and independent federation of Malaya. 
generally, it was a major turning point in the formation of independent Malaya. History has been made whereby Tunku Abdul Rahman was successfully appointed as the Chief Minister of the Federation of Malaya at the time. Following the completion and victory of this election process, so the election pro results provided a clear mandate to Malayans to continue to advocate for Malaya's independence and for Tanah Melayu to have its own constitution. Next, we move to the Constitutional Commission. As a result of its formation, the Constitutional Commission has been known as the Red Commission after the name of the Commission's Chairman. The major goal of the Commission was to write a constitution for independent Malaya. At the initial stage of its work, the Commission was uncertain whether they needed to prepare constitution for all of the states that comprise the Federation or merely a federal constitution that applied to all states. Following the completion of the term of reference, it was determined that the Commission would create a draft for, uh, of a federal constitution as well as a chapter to discuss issues to be included in state constitution. So, we are moving on to the bill enacting the constitution. The Constitutional Commission issued the first draft of its report and published the first draft of the constitution in February 1957. The commission then obtained a lengthy response. A number of discussions were also held to analyze the specific of the constitution contents. Several complaints and remarks were made. As a result, another committee consisting of 11 people was formed to consider the recommendation. The commission was made up of four Malay Rulers delegates, four Alliance government representatives, the British High Commissioner and the Chief Secretary and also the State Attorney. The Red Commission then prepared the second draft of the Constitution as a result of the meetings. In the meetings also, discussion and memoranda were submitted by the parties. The British Parliament then presented, debated and approved the second draft. The Constitution was returned to Tanah Melayu after the enactment process in the British Parliament was completed. And then the, the Federal Legislative Council debated and approved the Constitution once more. On 27 August 1957, the Federal Legislative Council finally approved the Federal Constitution. It went into effect on August 31, 1957. The Declaration of the Kemerdekaan Tanah Melayu also coincides with the effective date. As a result, the Federal Constitution becomes a symbol of the country's independence recognized by the all international community. So next, I will discuss on development of sovereignty, prerogative and legal immunity of the Malay rulers and the Yang Dipertuan Agong, YDPA. So for the general expression, this is the topic that I will discuss, which include the time of uh, rulers in before British intervention, up after British intervention, and after the SIM of Nine Union was introduced, and after the 1957 constitution was made. Firstly, I will discuss the development of sovereignty, prerogative and legal immunity of the Malay rulers before the British intervention. Firstly, Undang Undang Melaka provide three qualities that must be possessed by the ruler's subject, which is that he must uphold honor in all of his actions. Secondly, he must obey the command of the ruler, whether the ruler is tyrannical or not. Lastly, he must ask for mercy from the ruler. This shows that the Sultan at the time had a very big influence of power to govern his subjects. Malay people also refer to Daulat as Sultan to show great respect for the loyalty to the Malay rulers. The rulers during this time has an absolute power to command and govern the country. Even though the power may have been decentralized through a system of chief and sub chiefs it's because during that time there was no notion of system of checks and balance. His power was enhanced and maintained through the development of an unconditional loyalty that was implemented in Malay people with a strong sense of loyalty and fear for the rulers. So, after that, uh, following the British intervention in the Malaya in 19th century, it gave a significant impact on the sovereign and the power of hereditary rulers. After the appointment of British resident and a British advisor, British engagement in Malaya in 19th century reduced the power of Malay monarchs in the nine states. The Pankow Treaty, which was signed in, the in 1874 with the Sultan Perak with the British, 
provide the employment of British residents in the state mark the beginning of British dominance over the Malay states. So in the states, the rulers need to accept the advice of the British residents on all matters except matters regarding to the Muslim uh, and Malay custom. Although the ruler remains as the highest in hierarchy, the residents often use the nominal power of the rulers to set up their own system of the government. For example, uh, Sir W. H. Treacher, who is a resident uh, general of federal Malay states, that the position has in fact been reversed. Instead of Sultan carrying the government with the advice of resident, the resident carries on the administration with the reference when he, when he considers it is necessary for the advice of Sultan. From this, we can see that uh, Malay rulers' power was limited by the resident that was appointed by the British. However, in the time of Japanese occupation, from 1940, 1941 to 1945, the rulers of Malaya were stripped of their power from all of the authority and limited to a nominal adversary position during that, that time. Then, after the, re the reoccupation by the British, the power of ruler was reinstated back to their original position as the head of state. Next, I will explain to you the development of sovereignty and prerogative and legal immunity of the Malay rulers after the scene of Malayan Union was introduced. So the Malayan Union scene was introduced uh, in 1946 to create a unitary state with the British. So the purpose of this scene is actually is to create the, a unitary state with a stronger and more effective administration and the defense by uh, transferring the sovereignty of Malay rulers to the British crown. According to the proposed Malayan Union, the state would be united and governed by a governor with assistance from the executive and legislative council with a delegated authority over the matters primarily over the local interest were to take place of the former state council with the independent authority. The rulers uh, would be charged in the Muslim adversary and have authority over the practice of Islam in their respective states. However, the government essence was required in order to override their legislative authority with regards to Islamic concept. So in this case, uh, the rulers only can uh, pass uh, the auto only can pass um, legislation if uh, they acquire assent from the governor. Due to this, however, uh, but due to the strong opposition from the Malays, the United Malays National Organization AMNO was established. Uh, to propose to resist the proposed Malayan Union. So they proposed to change Malayan Union to Federation of Malaysia. The Malays respond to the Malayan Union indicate at the beginning of a change in the relationship with the Malay rulers. The rulers' initial acceptance of Malayan Union proposal had caused some prestige. In this case, the rulers accept Malayan Union should be implied in our country. However, Despite that, the AMNO took on the roles of the Malay's actual defender, so the Malay rulers came to represent the Malay's identity and struggle until today. Next, I will discuss on the development of sovereignty, prerogative, and legal immunity of the Malay rulers and the Yang Agung under the 1957 Constitution. So, based on this, based on this doctrine, on the rulers were made head of state and head of religion of Islam in their own states. Position for the Yang Pertuan Agung was established by this constitution. It can be said that this constitution gives a lot of prerogative rights to the rulers. For example, the authority to assign legislation was granted to the king. The constitution also established the rulers will be legally immune from, the, from judicial proceedings. Article 32 of Federal Constitution 1957 provides that the king shall not be liable to any proceeding whatsoever in any court. And Article 181 clause to provide that no proceeding whatsoever shall be brought in any court against the ruler of a state in his personal capacity. This prerogative right of YDP also can be seen in Article 42 which states that he can grant pardons to criminals in respect of the offence committed within their states. The constitution has undergone numerous amendments since 1957 and there have been a relatively few amendments which affect the powers of opposition and the rulers. I said before there are few amendments that happen. This happened because a few events that happened. Firstly, uh, I, I will explain. 
the first event that influenced the ruler's power, which is the tragedy of on May 13, 1969. As we know, after the tragedy of May 13, where the collision between Malays and no Malays happened, there were change in the Constitution and the Sedition Act, which made it illegal to criticize the privilege, position, powers, and prerogative of the Malay rulers who serve as a symbol of Malay unity and the Malay struggles against those Malays. The conference of rulers approval was also required for any amendment to the constitution that affect this clause. This event uh, made the power of rulers to be increased because no one can uh, criticize the rulers. Important uh, event is the Douglas Gomez case. So in this case, uh, he was abused by the Sultan of Johor. He then made a report to the police. Uh, because of this, people start to question the rulers and express their rage. Furthermore, the Sultan, uh, furthermore, the Sultan of Johor and the reports, uh, the Sultan of Johor and Johor royal family were accused of committing other abuse. According to the reports in the weeks that followed, there were also claims that other rulers had abused their power. There are many cases, for example, it was claimed that the Pahang royalty was pressuring the Pahang government and its forestry official for additional timber concession despite the fact that significant concession had already been given over the course of the previous four years. So there are also many other cases regarding the rulers and the people and Malay people start to express their concern. So because of the government's incident, the draft to amend the provision of the constitution concerning the immunity of the rulers had been met. The purpose of this amendment is to remove the legal immunity that had been enjoyed by the rulers over the decade. This proposed amendment also did with the also did with the rulers' power to grant pardon and change with respect to sedition in the context of parliamentary proceedings concerning the rulers. The provision of the constitution providing for the immunity of the rulers was to be amended to replace the general immunity with an immunity limited to their action in official capacity. As for the conclusion, it can be seen that there were many development of sovereignty, prerogative and legal immunity of the Malay rulers and Yang Dipertuan Agong from time to time before the British intervention during the Japanese occupation, during the British reoccupation that triggered Malayan Union and after the Federal Constitution 1957 was established until now. Many events that took place influenced the power of the rulers and how people look at it. It is good to mention again that removal of the rulers' legal immunity was a significant constitutional amendment and development in Malaysia. This amendment is not to decrease the power of the rulers, moreover, to change this country from monarchy to republic country. But actually, it was to limit the rulers from overusing their special rights and powers. This amendment also is very important to keep the reputation of the rulers and to make sure that the people do not lose hope to our precious monarch system as the rulers are the symbol of our Malay struggle and unity. I think that's all from me. Uh, with that, thank you for your listening.